Right, I, I once uh, I once heard a, a story. It's a true story, um, but I, I can't remember the name of the fellow who did it. He was a he was a uh, I think he was in charge of some traders at a, f- a fund in London. Mm. Bit of an older chap. He used to go to work every day. He'd read the Financial Times. He'd flip a coin and decide whether it'd be long or short. <laughs> and what, whatever they did, they would just the whole. Th- the whole group would just be long or short, whatever bias he dis, 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 decided. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they outperform the market. And so, if you if you think Leon's doing that, essentially, he's saying, I'm, I'm deciding to be long, short the data, and I'm not going to change my opinion. And, you know, the uh, uh, case in point selling the euro dollars, I'm not going to change my opinion. I'm just going to short euro dollars. Yeah. It makes life a lot easier. <laughs> it really does then, um, you know, trying to chase a trend, you know, and trying to chase price because price is deceptive. Price isn't always reflective of value and value isn't always reflected in price. So my, my, my number one thing is, is this a bargain? You know, is this cheap, right? Is this cheap? Right? There's a lot of traders here who we're looking at, and this goes into maybe something something else, maybe just a sidetrack, but they would have been looking at that level in real time. And how many traders would be looking at that level, right? And looking at, okay, we want to break out, bounce, bounce, bounce. And then they get the cheese. Right, they get short. Then this large, massive candle here. Yeah. Again, this would have stopped them out. They probably would have went long, not understanding that in fact this was a nice area, fresh area of supply. Ended up getting short here. And uh, sorry. And then look what happens. When people see massive candles like this, they tend to get scared of price. But if you understand value, right, you, 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 won't, you won't get scared of, of, of buying into strong candles if you have conviction in what it is that you're doing. Am I going to be right all the time? Nope. Just manage my risk and uh, go for more than I uh, go for more than I risk and then that's it. At a two to one, all I've got to do is be right more than 35% of the time to make profit. And if I'm right 35% of the time, I break even. There or thereabouts. And the question I have to ask myself is, can I be right more than 35% at two to one? And if I've got fundamentals on my side, I've got the fundies on my side, right? And the data is saying, so the only thing that really kind of scuppers trades is you know short-term sentiment, potential stop hunting, etc., liquidity. But overall, if I'm comparing data from the countries, again, you have to ask yourself: Can you be right more than 35% of the time at two to one? And that's it. That's why fundamentals are so important. Yeah, that's super cool. So, like that idea of, you know, could you do that? Could you be right? Well, no, it's, it's the wrong wording. Could you make money? Yeah, yeah. Thirty-five percent of the time, you know. Yes. The commissions, whatever. But of course, yeah. It's like it's like um, it always seemed really achievable to me as an idea, as a concept. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So what would that? But what would that mean? It just means you have to take good trades and yeah. manage your risk and. Well, you've got a fighting chance. Could you really be that poor? Well, even if you are, you're not going to be. You're not going to be blowing tons of money. You're just going to be down a little bit. You know. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, your mic all right? Everyone all right? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So, um, uh, distance travelled and fresh levels. We always want to look for 
fresh, absolute, the freshest levels of demand. And this leads into, I guess, um, uh, support and resistance as well. So fresh levels. Um, and the reason why you want to look for fresh levels is because for, for one, um, you're buying um, at the first discount. So what's a fresh level? Just think so, a fresh, so a fresh level would be, for example, I'll look at the bottom level, right? Let's do a demand, right? So a fresh level would be totally untouched, sorry. So that would be in real time. Actually, it's, actually it's right there. Um, uh, the, 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 the demand, right? So when prices went in and out, that's a nice, that's a nice technical demand zone. I love that. Love seeing that. It's just the wrong direction. You know, you'd be buying euros here um, and I wouldn't be buying euros. But what you want to see is it really kind of untouched, un, you know, not tainted, not tampered, not, not prices coming in. Um, for maybe a couple of reasons. And um, the main, sorry, maybe one of the reasons is that um, you want to be the first, really, if you understand value, to be the buyer. Once everyone starts seeing this, and maybe I can draw this, I'm trying to think of, trying to look for an example. All right, brilliant example would be right here. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I took this trade as well. Um, and this is on YouTube, matter of fact. Around the 12th of November, you'll, you'll see this, the 12th of November, um, on YouTube, my YouTube channel, I was, I was arguing the points, they're arguing, but demonstrating the point that there's going to be a lot of traders in real time looking to short this area. All right. And the reason why is because I think I was saying that supply, sorry, support and resistance doesn't represent, doesn't always represent value. So most traders would look at this level bounce, bounce, and then it's gone through and then they would look right at this area to short because what should happen is support, support should turn to what resistance but again where was the proof of value in this move lower highs lower lows right right here so the best area to look for a sell trade was up here everything below this right isn't a great you're buying at necessarily an expensive level for the dollar. So if we take that area there, so this is an expensive level for the, for the dollar. And we know this for a fact because prices couldn't go any lower in between this high and this low is the 50% people say Fibonacci is not Fibonacci number, but it will be represent as fair value. Now traders who were looking at this level bounce, bounce, and then support becomes resistance can imagine what they were looking to do on the intraday is looking to sell. But if we're looking at this being a bargain and this being expensive, this being fair value, they're buying below fair, where they're buying in, in, in an expensive area, they're buying a dollar actually in an expensive zone. So when prices went through, mm-hmm. They ended up getting stopped out. This area here was actually a level, a level of demand, sorry, supply, say demand, supply. And all I was doing is waiting for my first chance to sell. Prices came up and on the intraday, I got short in this area here. This one, um, I actually didn't make targets. I literally was about, uh, I made one-to-one -one targets. I, I split my uh, my risk up. So I do one-to-one -one on the first position and then I let the second position run to around 80% of the range. And this must've come probably around about five or six pips um, on my target. It literally just didn't touch my second position. But um uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That is what I do all the time. Just look for supply zones.
So because of that level that you've you've drawn um, to the left, uh, was you anticipating that um, it was going to go sideways at that point? Yeah, do you know what? I always anticipate a ranging market, especially after a trending market. The market will, you know, there's obviously two market states, trend, trending and ranging. So after lower highs and lower lows, I expect market to range from somewhere. It's either going to range from here or it's going to range from some other demand zones. I don't know which one, but I'm anticipating it's going to range from here, from here, or from here. We just don't know which one it is going to range from. So that's a great question, matter of fact. I'm always anticipating prices to range because I mean the stats I guess say that um, prices are you know more in a ranging market than they are in a trending market but again it just depends on the uh, the pair that you're buying so at the minimum I expect to range at the best I expect the, the, the trend I guess to continue but either way I'm expecting something to happen at a supply zone and I'm buying the dollar you know, if it's not there and, it, and prices don't work out, that's fine. As long as my fundamentals are in place, you know, I've got to keep an eye on obviously sentiment. But as long as the fundamentals are in place, short, short. And Always it, short because of the bias. That's exactly it. And then I'm expecting obviously prices to range either from there or there or you know, and if, like I said, if I'm right about my fundamentals, then they should at least come down and retest the lows. If I'm right on my fundamental bias, if I'm buying at a value. How, how did you know that price would not pull back further where you bought there? Is it just like candlestick set up? I, I don't. I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, with 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 price, you never know. It's just probabilities. I just manage my risks. So, I you know when if I if I kind of clear this, this was going to be the first area, the first area of supply that I was looking at. So, look at you know one of the things I said was um, a bit busy chart, but um, is you want to see like the hard in hard out price movement, and it looked. <clears throat> Brilliant from here. Look at this. Look at that. Hard in, hard out. That's what I like to see. So then it was just a case of looking for price action on the lower time frame. The four hour is what I trade. Four, six, eight, and 12, I look at. And then if I see specific uh, candles, and then I look to get short. What do you look for, mate? It's like rejections and like engulfing candles and things. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's just, you know, your typical, um, uh, 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 really, I only have a kind of two candles, um, two candle, uh, two, how do I put it? I look for two setups, really, for, um, two candle formation setups. That's about it. On the four, the six, the eight, and the 12. It's n nothing too complicated, too complex. Oh, right, cheers, mate. Yeah, but when it comes to value, the point being was that buying at buying here where everyone else was buying, and I, you know, I, I sometimes I like to uh, look at what other traders are doing on YouTube, yeah. And on this one, um, I had to, you know, uh, have a look because I just I thought to myself, I know they're all buying, I know they're all going to be buying, you know, I say buying the dollar, but they're going to be trading here, and sure enough. You know, the popular YouTubers were like, yep, 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 sell here, talk becomes resistance, da, 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 da. And I was like, mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. And I actually made a video, so you can check that out on YouTube as well on this day. And I was saying, this is not the level to buy. Even if, even if prices, if prices would have now reversed here. Now, a lot of traders probably would have been like, yay, I was correct. That's fine. That is, oh, that is fine for me because what happens is if that creates a lower low, let's say, 
what I'll be doing is looking for a pullback into this area here because that would have then created my supply zone. Because I'm looking for proof of value, lower highs, lower lows, and then prices, prices come back because prices will come back to a supply zone. Now, will the supply zone work? Again, it's just probabilities, but this is always proof of value. This was a bargain area. It was such a bargain that it went past what would have been the expensive area. and It made a new low. So if prices ever come back to this area, that's where I want to be buyer of the dollar.